Hi, welcome to another lesson at Edu Solutions Institute. Now, today's lesson, we are looking at the final topic of Section A Mechanics of the CSEC Physics Syllabus. On last week's lesson, we take a look at power, energy, efficiency. And now this week, we're going to look at the term of pressure and what exactly is pressure. So stay tuned as we explore on the topic of pressure. The term pressure has to do with the effect of forces acting on a specific area. So therefore, we get pressure when there is a force that acts on a specific area. So example, if I put my hand on this board, then my hand is exerting a force on the wall, which is in this specific area here where my hand covers, so it hence produces a pressure at this point. So therefore, we say we find the pressure by dividing the force that we apply divided by the area and we have a unit of pressure to be the Pascals, which is PA, capital P, common A. Now, it's very important to know that the unit for area should always be in meters squared. So sometimes the examiner will put at centimeters squared but the important thing is to note that all unit for area should be in meters squared. Now, this pressure formula we use for solid objects. So when solid objects exert force on something else, then this is the force, the pressure formula that we use. Now, pressure does not only exist with solids. Pressure exists in liquids and gases. And that term, we collectively call them fluids. So in fluids, the pressure is dependent not on the area or definitely the force, but more specifically, how deep are you, so the depth, as well as the density of that specific fluid. So if we take into consideration water, right? So if we're at the top of the water, it's less pressure than when we're at the bottom of the water because the depth is changing. The density, if we're comparing you be in water, fresh water, or you be in seawater. Seawater is a little bit more denser because it has the salt. So hence, in seawater, at the same level, you will have a greater pressure than if you're in a fresh water at the same level. <clears throat> so therefore, to find the pressure in fluids, we go with density of the fluid, rho, times g, which we know is gravitational acceleration, which is 10 on Earth, and then the depth, which we signify as h. So therefore, that's how we will find the pressure in liquids. So therefore, we notice that these are the two things that will make or determine what size pressure we have. But if it's for one specific liquid, then therefore the depth is what's the determining factor to determine what your pressure will be. Now, this value is very important. That the atmosphere, the air that we have in our surrounding, they actually create such a pressure on anything that exists in the atmosphere. And at standard conditions, this value is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 pascals which tells us that this is the amount of pressure that the air particles will have on objects that exist inside Earth's atmosphere. Now, if we are going to consider the pool and we find the pressure inside the pool at the bottom of the pool, now it's important to know that that pressure is only due to the water. Now, if the question asks us, 
what's the total pressure on that object yes the water is producing the pressure but also the atmosphere is actually pushing down on the water so it's adding more pressure so therefore the pressure you get here will be added to this atmospheric pressure to give you the overall pressure that an object will feel when they are inside the pool so therefore we always consider to add atmospheric pressure to fluids once the fluid is open to the air particles so air has an effect on the pressure all right now the final thing is how do we demonstrate that depth has a great uh, dependency to the pressure now if we have a container fill it with some water and we have holes at three different heights we notice that as a top height it spewed water out at a very short distance away the middle one spew it at a further distance but the bottom hole will spew the water at the furthest distance because here we have a lot of water particles here so hence it's giving up great pressure and that great pressure causes the water to spew out at a greater distance at the top is just a small amount of water that's creating this pressure to cause it to spew at a smaller distance so here we have the concept of pressure both in solids as well as in fluids so I hope you understand a little more about the concept of pressure and stay tuned as we explore more in future lessons about the CSEC physics syllabus. Thank you.